Hi friends, my name is Millie and welcome to my next video. Today we are going to be talking about all of the books I read in the month of April. So in April I read a grand total of 17 books and I am really pleased with that total although I have to say April it was kind of a mid-month, you know, it was, I didn't really have any books that I truly, truly loved. I did have one five-star read, but there weren't any books that I was like, wow, this is a complete new favourite book. So that's kind of disappointing, especially after how fantastic March was as a reading month. April kind of fell by the wayside. <laughs> so I was really busy this month, so I feel like that played a part in my kind of enjoyment of the books that I was reading. I just had so much going on with my mum's birthday and other various things that I just ended up, I feel like, not fully getting into any of the books that I was reading. Also in April I was trying to tackle my net galley shelf that was my whole sort of reading challenge for the month and at the start of April I had 75 books on my net galley shelf. In April I have read I think out of the 17 16 of those were ones that were on my net galley shelf but at the time of filming I've got 80 books on my net galley shelf so the challenge has kind of completely failed. I have obviously crossed off a lot of old books on my net galley shelf from reading ones that I own physically but it hasn't lowered the total of books on my net galley shelf at all and I think that that is down to the fact that I really need to go on a requesting ban I really need to stop requesting books and just read the ones that I've got I just don't have any self-control that's what I've learned <laughs> so We'll get into the statistics and then we'll break down the books that I read in April. So as I said, I read 17 books in April and across those 17 books I read a total of 6,165 pages. All of the books I read were novels, there were not any graphic novels or novellas read this month. Six of the books I read were ebooks, so read from the NetGalley app, and 11 of them were ones that I read physically. And from this graph you can see that it says sort of physical and mixture. The ones that say mixture were physical reads. They are just also ones that were on my net galley shelf. In terms of the age categories I read six YA books and 11 adult books and once again to no one's surprise all of the books that I read this month were fiction but breaking down the genres that I read I read three contemporary books, seven fantasy books, two historical books, one horror book, one paranormal book and three romances. And breaking down the ratings, I had one five star read, which is just so sad after having quite few in March, two 4.5 star reads, eight four star reads, three 3.5 3 star reads, two three star reads and one two star read. As I said, you can see from these ratings, it's kind of a mid month. There weren't any real lows, but there weren't really any real highs with just one five star read there. So let's get into the books that I read. I know that I said I read 17 books in April but I'm only going to be talking about 14 of them because three of the books read have been published in America anyway by St Martin's Press and as part of the boycott I will not be talking about those books in this video. So we're only going to be talking about 14 books and I feel like let's go in order of ratings today so we'll start at the bottom. So starting at the bottom with the only two star read of the month it is Fathom Folk by Eliza Chan. This is a adult fantasy book revolving around a kind of semi-submerged world. You have humans living in skyscrapers and then you also have the Fathom Folk which are like sirens, sea witches etc living in the polluted waters below and we have two main characters you have one who is the captain of the guard like in the military wanting to sort of enact systematic change and then you have another one who is a sea dragon I believe and she was sort of part of the revolution and it's kind of about this kind of war that's going on between the humans and the Fathom folk and it had such a great concept but it just fell flat for me. I just felt like the world building was lacking in this, I just felt like we needed more information about how the world came to be this way other than just kind of explaining it as it being humans fault which I do completely get but I just didn't really understand how it has gotten to this point where the waters are all polluted and stuff. I just wish that it had, had just something extra, just a bit more development in the world building. And I also felt like 
the characters because even though in the synopsis we have two main characters you technically have three and they all just kind of felt indistinguishable from each other i couldn't really tell apart their personalities at all and there was just so much going on in such a short space of time and we kept switching from point of view to point of view and i just never ended up feeling connected to any of the characters which doesn't help for me i love to feel connected to a character that's what really makes me root for the story and care about it and that just didn't happen with this one and honestly this is one of the few books that i've considered dnfing in my life because i just i just didn't care i just didn't care what happened so and i'm really sad because i always had really high hopes for it so now getting into the freestyle reads the first of which was kindling by tracy chi this was actually the only book that I read this month that was not on my net galley shelf I read it as part of a bookstagram book tour spot and honestly I didn't like it it was a three stars because it was written quite well you could tell that the author has a talent with writing and I do really want to read some of her other books I have we are not free and thousand steps in tonight by Tracy Chi as well and I do really still want to read those because I've heard great things about them this one though this entire book is told in second person perspective and considering the fact that we have seven points of views in this book so seven main characters and all of them are told in second person perspective I just don't think it worked you could not tell the characters apart personally and I just didn't feel like second person perspective was really the right choice for it there were things happening there would be characters dying or events happening in the world and I would not realize that they had happened until 20 pages later when we were in someone else's point of view I just don't think that second person perspective works for a story with seven main characters one main character sure but not seven I did like the concept of this story Story, talking about trying to find peace in the aftermath of war but it just it just didn't work because with the seven main characters you just couldn't tell them apart they were just indistinguishable I'm sorry and I know that a lot of people might like this this might work for some people it just didn't work for me but I do still really want to read more from this author which is why it was a free star read and the other free star read that I had this month was A Botanical Daughter by Noah Medlock this is a queer Victorian book it's about two Victorian gentleman who kind of takes solace in their botanical garden and hide away from the world and they decide that they want to try and create intelligent life from plant matter and it kind of answers some sort of philosophical questions about is this life real is this their daughter is she a person all on her own and considering it's such a short book at 282 pages the copy i read being anyway i felt like it dragged there was so much terminology going on in terms of the various scientific subjects that they were talking about anatomy botany all sorts of stuff and i just feel like it was never fully explained in a way that someone who hasn't understood these terminologies how this plant matter came to life it's kind of almost a frankenstein retelling and it's pitched as being horror but i didn't feel like it had the atmosphere needed to be a horror book it was really compared to silvia moreno garcia's mexican gothic and i just feel like if you're going to make that kind of comparison you need to have the strength to stand up to the atmosphere of that book because mexican gothic has one of the best atmospheres i've ever read in a book it was so creepy and caused chills on you whenever you were reading it and i just did not get that from a botanical daughter so i feel like kind of making that comparison almost damaged this book for me in some way because i was just left feeling a bit disappointed however it was really beautifully written and i would like to see more from this author i just don't think that this book worked for me personally and i also found it a little bit weird that you have a romantic relationship going on between this plant daughter and a human being and there's a very almost unnecessary scene that goes into a lot of graphic detail about their romantic relationship and it was just a bit weird because she's a plant you know so we're now getting into the 3.5 star reads the first of which was sunbringer by hannah kana this is the sequel to god killer which was a book that i read last year perhaps and really really enjoyed i did give that one 3.5 stars as well but i do think on reflection that one is closer to a four star read whereas this one 
is a 3.5 star read. God Killer is essentially a adult fantasy book revolving around a mercenary whose job is to kill gods, as the title would suggest, until she comes across a god she can't kill and the young girl it has attached itself to. And so she, with these two and together with a former knight, decides to travel to the city where the last of the wild gods resides in order to be granted a wish each. I really like the characters in that book and what I found with that book was that there is a really fantastic found family aspect. You have all of these characters who are from very very different walks of life, have very different opinions on gods and on the world, and they come together to form this really beautiful family and this really beautiful bond, and I feel like that was what was missing in Sunbringer for me. In Sunbringer the characters are all separated and they're all kind of doing their own thing, they all have their kind of own missions, and I felt like that made the book weaker than God Killer because the found family aspect was kind of lost in that. Although the characters have character development in themselves, we lose the kind of charm of the first book in the found family dynamic and that just made it a bit disappointing for me. However, I do think that this book opened up the world a lot more, which was kind of what I was wanting from Godkiller, so it's a bit tricky. But I'm hoping that in the sequel to Sunbringer, whenever that comes out, the characters will be brought together again and we'll kind of have the best of both worlds. It's definitely a sequel where reading though because I do believe that the last book or the next book in the series will kind of bring it all together so I would definitely suggest if you liked God Killer to read Sunbringer just be aware of the fact that some of the charm is lost a little bit. The next 3.5 star read for me was The No Girlfriend Rule by Kristen Randall. This is a YA contemporary surrounding a tabletop role-playing game. You have our main character Hollis who kind of just wants to prove herself to her boyfriend and he won't let her join his tabletop role-playing sort of team. It's kind of Dungeons and Dragons-esque and the rule is that there are no girlfriends allowed on his team so she decides to find an all-girls team and it's really about her finding herself and perhaps she will actually find the love that she deserves and it was just really really cute. It did take me a long time to read though. It's only about 300-ish pages but it took me like over a week to read and I think that was just because there was too much of the tabletop role-playing game aspect for me. I felt like we often were taken out of the real life story which was really what I was interested in. I was really more interested in Hollis's journey of self-discovery and her kind of coming to the terms of realising that she is queer and that she has a crush on one of the girls in the team and we would often just get pulled out of important moments in real life to go into this tabletop role-playing aspect and it just I just didn't feel that connected to the characters because of that because we were kind of having to deal with other main characters at the same time as in their characters of the game. However this is a really really great way of contemporary in how it shows the power of female friendship. We have a really really great friendship group in this in the team that Hollis finds herself in and I also just really loved how it showed like nerdy joy. If you like Dungeons and Dragons or anything like that this will definitely be a book for you. It's just not really a book for me because I don't really understand <laughs> any of that and I just I was far more interested in Hollis's journey than the journey of her D&D &D character. The next 3.5 star read for me was This Spells Love by Kate Robb. This is a almost witchy rom-com, it's an adult romance and you have a woman whose heart has been broken just about four weeks before and she decides to try and erase her ex from her life by performing this spell and it actually ends up that she ends up in an alternate reality where not only was she never with her ex, but her best friend Dax doesn't know who she is. And to get back to her real life, she needs to convince Dax to kiss her. And I really liked this one. It was a lot of fun. I just was disappointed that the magic system was never explained. You have hints that a certain character in this throughout is going to play a bigger role in the magic system, is going to have had some hand in how the book is playing out and it never really pays off. You just never really find out what was going on in that and I just felt a bit cheated almost. But in terms of the characters, I really liked them and they both really grew on me throughout this book. Dax and Gemma, I wasn't convinced by their chemistry at first but as the book went on I was really rooting for them and the author has a really nice easy flowing writing style as well that I really enjoyed. I felt immersed into the characters in this world. I was just left disappointed by how things were not really ever explained. And now we're getting into the biggest portion which is the four star reads. 
The first of which was Emily Wilde's Map of the Other Lands by Heather Fawcett. This is the sequel to Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies, which is a very whimsical, lovely book about a woman, a professor, who journeys to... I can't really even remember where now. <laughs> she journeys in order to be able to study fairies, and her fellow professor, Wendell Bamberby, joins her, and it's just... It's just such a lovely book. I can't really give much more away than that because otherwise it's kind of a spoiler. It's hard to explain these books without spoiling them. But in this one, she is traveling up north in order to be able to create a map of the fairy realms. And this is definitely a sequel worth reading. It is just as charming and cozy and lovely as the first book. And this series really does just feel like a warm hug. It's just such an escapist kind of book. I just really love how you can escape into the world with these characters and not want to come back out. And these books are written really unusually. You have footnotes and they are really written like an academic journal. And what I found with this one was it felt even more personal than the first book. In this one you really get to know Emily a lot better, you get to know her personality more, and this one felt more like a diary rather than an academic journal, which I really appreciated. And also Poe is back. Poe was one of my favourite characters from the first book so I was really glad we got to see him again in this and they have since announced a third book in the series which I believe is called Emily Wilde's Compendium of Lost Tales and based on the ending of this one I can't wait to read that and I hope it has another really adorable cover as well. I then read A Forced to Read of Right on Cue by Fallon Ballard. This is a Hollywood romance. We're following a actress turned screenwriter and she has decided she's not going to write any more happy endings and she actually ends up starring in a rom-com for the first time since her disastrous acting debut at the very start of her career and the love interest she's acting opposite is actually the guy who kind of put her off from acting at a very young age and it was just so cute i love this the chemistry was insane there is a specific scene on the red carpet and i felt like i was watching a movie like it was just so good i didn't really realize how much i would like a celebrity romance but i definitely want to read more of these because it was just so much fun and you could just really really picture everything that was happening the writing was really easy to get into i felt really immersed in the world and while i do have to say that i did prefer the first half to the second half because of the chemistry it was still a really really great time. The thing that I didn't like was the third act breakup. It was just so unnecessary. The characters communicate quite well through most of the book but then in the third act breakup they suddenly don't know how to communicate anymore and I was just like just talk to each other. It's not that hard. <laughs> but the whole like celebrity romance, filming a rom-com together, it really did scratch an itch and I just can't wait to see what comes next from this author. I just love her writing. The next four star read for me was The Warm Hands of Ghosts by Catherine Arden. I'm really sad that this was a four star read because I was really hoping that I would absolutely love it because I really really love the Bear and the Nightingale trilogy which is the first books by this author. The Warm Hands of Ghosts is a World War One historical fantasy and you have Laura, a nurse who travels back to Belgium after hearing that her brother has died but because of the kind of circumstances of his death and of personal aspects that are returned to her there are some things returned to her which should have stayed with his body if there was a body so she decides to travel back to Belgium in order to find out what really happened to him and while she's there she hears word of a fiddler who can kind of like erase your memory and we also then go back to two months prior where we're following Freddy and we're finding out what happened to him and he is trapped with a German soldier and it is really a story of finding out what happened, who this fiddler is and I really could just kind of wish that the fantasy aspect had played a bigger role. The magical element just didn't feel as important to the story as the brother and sister relationship was and while I do love how Catherine Arden portrayed that relationship in this book and the love and care that they showed to each other was so beautiful. I think I was just kind of expecting more of the Winter Night trilogy which was possibly you know a fault on my part it just didn't feel as magical <laughs> in a way. However, this author is incredibly talented and this book does continue to show that. The way that she crafts a story is really just, it's just genius. And I do think that this author is possibly one of the best writers that we have at the moment. 
the bleakness and the desperation of war was really clearly put across and throughout this book you really just have a message of hope it's just a message of trying to find yourself laura trying to find her brother freddie trying to find his way back home and it was really just a story of hope and i think that the author did that brilliantly it just wasn't quite what i was wanting from the book but i can't wait to see what comes next from Catherine arden the next four star read that i had was Bookshops and Bone Dust by Travis Baldry. This is the prequel to Legends and Lattes. It's set 20 years before the events of Legends and Lattes and we're following Viv at the start of her mercenary career. She gets injured and is kind of sent to recuperate in this sleepy beachside town and there she discovers the secondhand bookshop that she never really knew she needed and it was just so cute just as charming and cozy and wholesome as Legends and Lattes. Really really I just love these characters in this world. I could just read in this world forever. And what I really loved in this book was how the author kind of highlights the magic of finding that special book for the right person. As a bookseller myself, you can really feel the satisfaction of matching the book to the person. And it was just, it was just so lovely. I just really loved that aspect. The only thing that I found that made this not be a five star read like Legends and Lattes was, was because it being a prequel, you know how it has to end. You know that Viv will survive to go on to the events of Legends and Lattes and it just made the stakes, which are already quite low, feel almost non-existent. Like the kind of conflict in this book, I was like, well, we know how it's going to work out because of Legends and Lattes existing. And I think that is sometimes the trouble with prequels is that you know how it has to end. So sometimes you just don't feel that connected to the story. And I think that was my trouble with this one. I just, I knew how it had to end. So I didn't really care about the conflict. I just love the characters and it's still a lovely series. I would still really recommend reading Bookshops and Bone Dust if you just want to be comforted. I then finished another series with a four star read being The Catch by Amy Lee. This is the third book in the Influence series and this is following Melanie who is a fashion influencer and her brand is kind of dying. She's kind of feeling like she's being replaced by the younger influencers and so in order to kind of save her brand she goes to this sleepy sort of fishing village well, technically, she's actually meant to go to a resort, but they've booked her onto the wrong week. So she has to find alternative accommodation and she ends up at this inn and the grumpy inn owner is Evan and he does not want her there. And they decide to try and like team up almost. They decide to have a fake engagement basically. And that is so that the B&B &B or the inn can be saved and also so that Melanie's brand can be saved. And it was just a lot of fun. It was really, really cute. This really just had chemistry like in spades. Like the chemistry between the characters was so so good. I think that what I found difficult to kind of wrap my head around with this one was the fact that it's both a slow burn and insta love and I love a slow burn so much. The characters don't get together until like 200 pages in and you are just like rooting for them to actually get together. However in terms of the timeline of the story by the end of the book it's only been about two weeks since the start and that just makes it insta love. So I found that a bit difficult to kind of wrap my head around because although the slow burn was really really great I don't like insta love at all so I just found it a bit kind of tricky I just kind of wish that the timeline had been a bit more stretched out to make it a bit more believable almost and a bit more realistic however I did really love Mel and Evan together I loved how headstrong they both were how they kind of it was almost like Kate and Anthony from Bridgerton vibes you know the way that they both are just so stubborn and really believe in their own being right and I really really liked that and I also really loved the small town setting it was just really really lovely and I, I just wish that the timeline had been a bit more stretched out so that I didn't have to deal with it being insta love. And the final four star read that I will talk about because the other two were published by St Martin's Press so I won't be talking about those is An Education in Malice by S.T. Gibson. This is the second book from the author of A Dowry of Blood and this one is a Carmilla retelling. It's set in sort of the 1960s and you're set in an isolated college in the heart of Massachusetts and you have a very dark academia aspect so you have this kind of poetry professor and you have Carmilla and Laura who are the students who are kind of nemeses. They are really in competition with each other over this sort of poetry class and the professor is a vampire. It's really a tale of obsession. You have all of the characters kind of being obsessed with each other and it's 
really it, I thought it was really done well the atmosphere in Esther Gibson's writing always astounds me this is just so much so full of desire and obsession and darkness and it was just I thought it was done really really well especially with the setting I just could not stop reading it I read the second half of the book in one sitting it was just I was so captivated by it I also felt like the characters balanced each other out well with the three kind of main characters although you only have Laura and Carmilla's perspectives in here the professor de la Fontaine is definitely a main character in her own right and I really also loved getting to see how vampires fit into this world it's very different from a dowry of blood in how vampires are portrayed and I just really really liked it. I just kind of wish that the book had been a bit longer. It's about 340 pages and I just wish that the ending had been stretched out more. The kind of climax of the book felt very rushed and kind of easy considering the events that were happening in this book. We have almost a murder mystery aspect going on but you know who the murderer is and considering how the murders were playing out the ending felt very easy for who was committing the murders. It was all over too soon and I just wish it had been even a few pages longer to kind of really feel the tension but other than that I really really like this. S.T. Gibson's writing is so lyrical and atmospheric and I can't wait to see how Evocation, the latest book, plays out. And now into 4.5 star reads. I can only talk about one of them because the other was a St. Martin's Press book but the 4.5 star read that I can talk about is Song of the Huntress by Lucy Holland. This is a historical book and I thought it would have it does have kind of a fantasy aspect but it's definitely more historical and I just wish that I knew more about this time period. It's set in about, I don't know, 300 AD perhaps and you are following Queen Ethelberg who is actually a real historical figure. I had no idea beforehand <laughs> that she was and honestly I'm blown away by the clear amount of research that the author has put into this book. I had no idea about any of this so to have a book that talks about these historical figures and brings them into a story when I don't think that they've really been featured in any books before that I know of anyway. I really loved getting to know them and getting to know their world and I think that the author did a really good job of writing this period of history in such a way that I could picture it really clearly and could sort of immerse myself into the world. It's definitely a dense book. It's really kind of slow going and you really have to immerse yourself into the story and I just didn't feel that connected to the characters because of it because I felt like I was really really having to work to read the book but there's just so much to unpack there's magic there's conspiracies the wild hunt ancient britain like the kingdoms there's a almost an aspect of Boudicca but not quite. I also really loved how the author imagined queerness to fit into this historical setting. You have ace characters and you also have sapphic characters and it was, I just thought the author was really a master of telling a story. I just can't wait to read Sister Song by this author because I know that that is a really beloved book and I think that I will definitely love that one even more. This one, it was just a little too dense for me at times to properly connect to the characters. And the final bit that I've got to talk to you about is my five star read which was Only This Beautiful Moment by Abdi Nazemian. This is a intergenerational story set against backdrops of Tehran and Los Angeles and it's a wire contemporary that tells the story of these three generations of the same family each in their teenage years. So you have Mood in 2019, you have Saeed in 1978, you have Bobby in 1939, all of which are kind of trying to come into their sort of lives. In 2019, in Mood's story, he is travelling to Iran for the first time to be with his grandfather, Bobby, who is dying of cancer. And in 1978, you have Saeed, who is having to leave Iran because of the protests. And in 1939, you have Bobby, who is a gay teen who is just trying to survive in the world. And it was a really emotional story. You have have generational trauma, queer trauma and while it was a five star read for me it wasn't a five star read in terms of necessarily that it was going to be a new favourite book, it was a five star read in the fact it's a perfect book, it's important, it's beautiful, it's very necessary and I do think that everyone should read this. It was definitely a YA book that can be read by any age. Like you could be 50, 70 years old and get something out of this book. You don't have to be a teenager or in your early 20s to get something out of this. It was really really well done and I think that with having sort of dual timelines, with having three main characters, sometimes you have 
the risk of one character or two characters feeling more important or more likeable than another and I didn't get that with this book I loved each of the characters I loved each of their stories and I did not want to leave any of them but I was also really happy to go back and be with the other characters when we moved timelines so that was a really lovely aspect I just think that the author crafted this masterfully and it's definitely one that I think you should read it has trigger warnings for homophobia however quite severely and it was it was just so well done a really fantastic book so those are all the books that I read in April I wish April had been a better reading month for me it was just not I just didn't fall in love with any of the books I was reading and I don't know if it was because I just had such a successful month in March or if it was because I felt the pressure of trying to read the NetGalley books I was reading and so not necessarily picking up exactly what I was in the mood for perhaps but I am glad that I managed to cross off 16 books off of my NetGalley shelf even if it has done nothing to the total of the books on the NetGalley shelf by the end of the month at least I've read 16 of them there are 16 gone from the NetGalley shelf and there are other ones on there that I can focus on now and hopefully my sort of goal for May is going to be to find a five star read that is really what I want to do I want to find more five star reads to make up for April and hopefully I'll be able to do that with the books I've planned to read in May I'm really hopeful about a lot of them <laughs> and while one of the books I read in April that I won't talk about was a five star prediction for me and it wasn't a five stars it was four stars so I'm a bit nervous about reading more books from my five star predictions and them not being five star reads. I'm still holding out hope for me. And also my other goal for me is that my net galley reads, I really need to try and increase it above six. So I think that every month so far this year I've read six books on my net galley app and I really want to increase that. I want it to be at least eight in May because that is really the only way that we're going to be able to tackle the number of books on that net galley shelf so that's kind of the goal and what else am i pleased with in april i finished two series in april which i'm really pleased with well really i kind of caught up on three i caught up on the emily wilde series although there is another book to come out in that i'm caught up now i caught up on oh i caught up on the god killer series as well so that's good i finished the legends and latte series because at the minute at the time of filming there is not another book announced in that series so at the minute that's complete and i also finished the influencer series by amy lee there are not any other books announced in that series and with the way the ending of the catch played out i think that that series is done i'm excited to see what comes next from that author though i read some books that have been on my shelves and on my tbr for quite a while so i am pleased with that in april i just wish i'd had another five star read at least or just one that could be classed as a new favorite because at the minute nothing is beating funny story for my favorite book of the year i don't know if anything will but i'd like to have one contender so we'll see <laughs> hopefully may i will find that so i hope that you enjoyed my april wrap up please let me know if you've read any of these books that i've read and what you thought of them let me know what your favorite book for april was like this video if you liked it and subscribe if you want to and i will see you in another video very soon bye